What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko back with Tony and uh, Tony actually has this combo Udlich deck that he did in the past and then now we're doing again um, and yeah, Tony honestly just take it over. All right so as Spanko just mentioned uh, I did this I did this deck profile in the past if you're wondering where is it it's lost. Nobody knows. Uh, we I have no idea where the footage went Spanko doesn't but the profile hasn't changed it's gotten better. Yep. And the only reason I have I've waited this long to do is because the Eldritch cards are kind of pricey. Yeah. Luckily with Gold Series or Eldorado, Eldorado the Gold Eldorado, Series, yeah. we now have a way to get Eldritch for an affordable price. Yep. So starting our deck profile, we have three Eldritch the Golden Lord. So uh, this, this is one of the only decks where you actually play three Golden Lords. Uh yes. So this variant of the deck plays three Golden Lords. Uh realistically, you could play two. Why? Because this card uh is kind of a brick. So explain what it does. This card is a level 10 monster, kind of high, with 2500 hack, uh, 2800 defense. Pretty decent stats. It can send a spell alongside itself in the hand to send one card your opponent controls to the graveyard. Free removal. Yeah, free it also can it. special summon its, or it can also add itself back to the hand by sending a spell and trap your control, and then you can choose to special summon a zombie from your hand and give it an additional 1000 attack, including yeah, itself. itself. Yeah. So this becomes a 3500 beater if it like if you can manage to add it back from the graveyard. Uh, the reason we're playing three is not only because of the fact that this card is kind of crucial don't, for don't, the Eldritch don't, give it away deck, don't give it away yet. But you do need three copies. Yeah. Because one of those copies is going bye-bye very fast. Yeah, yeah, don't give it away yet. But... One, it's nice that these come in gold, so they fit. But more than anything, it's the fact that these cards, in other in any other scenario, are kind of brick. You don't want to see it first, but this is still a control deck. Yeah. You play it at a necessity. You can cut it down to two. You might have some problems when you play the rest of the engine, though. Yep. But the engine we're talking about here is three Deathwatch 003 and two Deathwatch 002. So this is what we mean by combo of the Okay, so you may have seen decks like Ritual decks in the past. Actually, you may have seen a bunch of decks in the past play the Deathwatch 001 for the purpose of summoning out for how to do some really crazy plays. Yep. This is the extended version of this engine. Or in this specific engine, you're still going to be summoning out Hauk with this, but because you summon out an additional Despot 001 off the fact that Despot 003, when it's normal summoned, you get two Despot 001s for your combo plays. And that lets you do some crazy things like draw four and then set up like a board and the gates before you even do your outlet. We'll, de we'll definitely do a quick combo at the end of the video. Yes, of yeah, course. Yeah. So if you guys want to see that, it'll be at the end. And the more important thing about this card, and I'm going to need you to remember this, is this is a level 3 monster. Well, I mean, that will be important later. Okay. Moving on from there, we have the one Cult Wing for the, that specific combo. You will be using this for summoned off of an Aurora Dawn to make more tokens, which allow you to summon back the 001s to keep doing plays that way. Yep. And then we have one Suchinoko. Uh, one, it's just a nice extender. Once again, the important aspect here, it's a level 3. Yep. From there, we have three Ash Blossom and three Effect Veiler. Uh, these monsters are hand traps. Uh, convenient enough because you're playing a combo variant, and but you're still playing control design by the way of Eldritch. These cards seamlessly work with cards like your Cross Out Designator for either disruption or letting your combo go through. Yep. Uh, important aspects about these cards though, this is level three, this has zero attack, and this has zero attack. I feel like anyone watching might know where this is going. I think you, they might. But I'm not gonna say it. But moving on, we have three Golden Cursed Outlands. Uh, this card, Pellet you pay 800, that scout cost, as they'd say, yep. to search for either a Gel Outlitch the Golden Lord or a Golden Land card. Both really important for the Outlitch side of the place. Yep. Furthermore, if this card is sent to the, from the field to the graveyard, it does let you send a Outlitch or a Golden Land from your deck to the graveyard, which is useful for setting up cards like your Outlitch to bring itself back or the Golden Land cards to actually cycle into the rest of your deck. Yep. Are uh, really useful. It's just the card that you want to get, uh, get into, and we have ways to draw into this. From there, we have the card that uh, makes all this relevant. We have three Small World. The, the most recent $60, $70 card. All right, so Small World is a very peculiar card. I do explain this on my channel briefly about how it works in my box opening for Abode, but I'll explain it again. When you activate Small World, you reveal one monster from your hand. Yep. Then you then you will search for a monster in your deck that is related to this monster in one of these attributes, either attributes, level, type, attack or defense. But it can't be more than one. But it has to be only one of those things. Yeah. Thus, for example, I can banish an ash to reveal to uh, to reveal from my deck a ash blossom, sharing the zero attack and nothing else. Yep. From there, I will then add to my hand a third monster that is equal related to the second monster by one of those attributes as well. Reiterating the attribute, the level, the type, the attack, or the fence. Yep. In this case, let's say my level three Despot 003, which is only related to my Ash by being level three. So 
This is like a combo starter for you. This is a combo starter in a number of ways. For example, once again, if I open the ash, I can reveal the ash from my hand to then banish the Suchinoko to add my 003. Likewise, I can go banish the Veiler to banish the ash to get this. Likewise, if I've opened too many of these, I can banish this to grab into one of these as well. But more hilariously enough, and I thought this was great, I can banish a Golden Lord yeah. to banish an Ash to search into my 003. And that's why you play three Golden Lord. Every one of the monsters in your deck goes into 003, essentially turning your entire monster lineup with a small world into your combo. Yep. Previously, when I played this deck, sometimes I had to play additional extenders because I'd open the 001 because I wasn't always guaranteed to open the 003, and then I have to make my Hulk play that way. This makes it so much easier for you to open this combo. Because you're always going to have the three in your hand. And because you're playing, once again, playing the hand traps, it allows you to play things like Cross Out Designator to seamlessly protect this combo from going off. Yep. Which, you do some, which allows this combo to get off very easily to generate massive advantage. And yep. we'll, I'll showcase that later. Okay. From there, and our spells, ooh, where did my deck go? Uh, we have three Pot of Prosperity. Uh, so, I don't know which order this is. You may have seen Magista deck Paul before this. Well, I don't know how this is gonna work. But, um, realistically, you're accessing only a very small portion of your extra deck. And a yeah. lot of times, depending on when you activate this card, your play does change, but knowing activating this card, you're gonna be banishing different things. Yeah. Obviously, the combo that with 003 will require some drawing. And Pot of Prosperity, unfortunately, locks you out of drawing. But that's fine, because then you can just banish all the cards that require that let you draw in that combo to grab, to do a different kind of line of play. Yeah. And as a, result, you'll, as a result of that, you'll always have at least uh, three, six cards to banish to let you get into something else. Yep. But it really does improve the consistency of the deck. From there, we have the three cross out designator because, well, because cross out. You need to stop those hand traps. I could be playing Call by the Grave. Uh, that could be your 41st card. Up to you. Or you could play two cross out, one call by randomly. Yeah. Up to you. It's just to answer the hand traps. Yep. Uh, from there, we have the actual outlet part of the deck in our three uh, out. Uh, Elixir of Scarlet Sanguine, two Conquistador of the Golden Land in gold, and one Hunquer, which is unfortunately doesn't come in gold. Yeah. So to explain this little engine here for the Outlix, uh, people who are new to Outlitch, Elixir here lets you special summon a mo zombie monster from your deck or graveyard. But if you do not control an Outlitch monster, you have to summon an Outlitch monster. And in most cases, realistically, the only monster you're going to be summoning out is, is your Outlitch the Golden Lord. Golden Lord, yeah. Uh, furthermore, while it's in the graveyard, it can banish itself, or no, it's, while it's in the graveyard, but not on the turn that you've actually activated the special summon effect, you can banish itself from the graveyard to then set from your deck to your field a Golden Land card. Yep. What are Golden Land cards? These cards here. Conquistador and Hakuera can activate themselves as continuous traps to summon themselves as trap monsters. Upon doing so, if you also were to control a Golden Lord at that moment, you can then just either A, destroy a face-up card you control, non-targeting, or banish a card in either player's graveyard. These are just fantastic disruption. Yep. Furthermore, because they special themselves, they do serve as bodies in case that someday you want to just do that and normal summon a Despot 003 in combo that way as well. Yep. But additionally, while they're in the graveyard, except for the turn that you activate the special summon effect, you can banish these cards from the graveyard to send an elixir card. So that's how you get back to this. Yes. So this card gets you into this card, which then gets you back into this card, but inherently lets you summon out your um, your outlitch multiple times. Yep. And this allows you to then, of course, because they're traps on the field as monsters or as spell traps, they can also be sent for the effect of your outlitch to Golden Lord to then special summon itself onto the field as a 3500 beater. Yep. So a lot of cool synergy there, but they're just generally fantastic disruption. You do not want to be playing too much of this though. Unfortunately, as much as I like to say it, this engine is equally as big as anything else, yep. but it does provide a level of a second layer of disruption that isn't a monster effect, so you don't lose to things like uh, Dark World No More. Yep. And it is functional once it gets rolling. Yep. Finally, for the traps, we have three Solemn Strike. Uh, you don't always have to go 003 combo immediately, yep. which means that if you don't, sometimes setting the strike can be used as disruption or as a way to insulate that play. And of course, we have three Imperm, because not only can we banish this off of our, uh, I guess, our cross out, but it is still a negation that you can draw into. Yeah. All right, so. Oh, well, um, we have the extra deck? Yeah, we have the extra deck here, and there's something really spicy in the extra deck. All right, so there's a few things here. I'm going to start with the, like, the, I guess, the least, the general combo equip component. So we have the one half that you make using a tuner, like our Despot 001, yep. and any non-tuner. We have the one uh, Aurorodon that we special summon three tokens, then to bring back our 001s. Yep. We then have the synchros we make. Now this can end in two ways. When you make your tokens and then your 001s, you can synchro for a number of fours. Obviously we can synchro for one of our two Herald of Arclight. Yep. Alternatively though, if you feel lucky, you can synchro summon into any of these old entity mm -hmm. Cthulhu. This deck draws so much. So Cthulhu is weird. Uh, the first effect is highly irrelevant. The effect that's gonna be important with this card here is that when this card is used as a seized material or a synchro material, 
the monster you summon gains the effect to draw one card. Yeah. Which means if I were to summon two of these using the two Despot 001s and the two level three tokens, along with the extra one, I can then overlay both of them to make a Dugaris. Triggering both of their effects, or triggering the, the granted effect of the Dugaris to draw two, of which I can then detach two more, uh, both these cards, then draw two more off of Dugaris' effect, and then send two. Yeah. Essentially, I've drawn four cards, discarded two cards, which can be golden land cards, which essentially it's set me good. up in place. Yeah. But then from there, I can then use a Rordon's effect to tribute it and then keep going from there. Yeah, you guys will see in the combo. It's pretty crazy. Because from there, once you summon out things like your Colt Wing, you summon the two tokens, you bring back the 001s, and that lets you make things like, for example, your Synchro Tuners, like your uh, Chris Strong Quandax, or your Cupid Pitch, which allows you to modulate levels for levels for, uh, go to either go up for a five or go down to a three. This is also really important for the combo. Yes, if you go down to a three, uh, you then get to synchro summon with that level seven cult wing to make a barons. Yep. Or if you're on in this situation where you are locked under um, prosperity and you can't draw, then the entire combo converts into barons and a savage. Yep. Finally, from there we have the one nightmare phoenix for removal because sometimes you just like. Don't these are just else. extra cards. Also, you can banish these a lot of times with Prosperity oh. if you need, right? We have none Nightbird Cerberus. Yeah. And then we have a funky card here. We have a Proxy F Magician. Yeah, so this is what I wanted to say about it being spicy. Show them the last card. So Proxy F Magician here, for all to explain, to explain what it does. Let's okay, okay. summon for my field. Yeah. Uh, what I can do, I can fusion summon, essentially, if I make this using whatever remnants of my field are effect monsters, I can fuse in, in a Golden Land card to actually summon out the Mad Golden Land. He actually makes this. Like we were testing earlier, not testing, but we were doing test hands earlier, and you can actually make this. You can make this card, and this card is actually a house. One, can't be destroyed by battle of card effects. Uh, outlets the Golden Lord when he comes back, can't be destroyed by card effects, yep. or when it sums itself by its own effect. That's cool and all. This thing inherently can be destroyed by battle of card effects. Yeah. It's 3,500 attack, so it's already the beefy 30, stat. 3,800, that's even bigger than the beefy stat uh, yeah. outlets comes in. And it lets you sack a level five or higher zombie to, to snatch steel monsters. Yep. More importantly, because it's an Eldritch monster, one, it treats itself as Eldritch the Golden Lord while on the field, which yep. means it works fantastically with all your Golden Land cards. Yep. But because it's still an Eldritch card, if you add or to activate your Scarlet Sanguine, you can bring this back from your graveyard. Oh, yeah, yeah. So sense. once you make it, you he actually becomes the alternative, like the, the ultimate form for your deck that you just go convert into massive beatdown and mind control with. That's really funny, but it actually works. Yeah, All right. uh, that's 15 cards. Second time I'm doing this. Yeah, you know what's funny? T Tony always does 14. Magistus profile, I don't know if you guys saw that one yet or if that one's going to come out after this, but regardless, the other profile we did today has 15. This also has 15. All right, but anyway, let's get into that combo I'm talking about here. All right, uh, this it. combo requires that you open literally Despot 003. That's, uh, that's literally it. Or any way to get to this, yes. aka your small world. But the realistic combo of this card requires just this. I'm going to start off by normal summoning my 003 and actually 003's effect special at Despot from my deck. Yep. I'm going to summon out a 001. I'm going to link, I realize I'm doing my zones really badly here, but I'm going to link both these monsters away to make a Christian Hawk of Ibex. Yep. Uh, Christian Hawk of Ibex, wherever this goes, I guess, uh, will trigger and to special summon another level four lower to uh, level three or lower tuner from my deck, which is going to be another 001. 001 is a machine, so is Hawk of Ibex. We can then link both these monsters away, and you know where this is going. We're going to make a Rordon. our Rordon. Rordon will summon three tokens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll use this field center there. There you go. Okay. We'll summon three tokens. And since two or more machines were special summoned from the, uh, to the field, both my Despot 001s were triggered to special summon themselves to the field. Yep. From there, if you want to go the full route, we're going to synchro summon using one of these tokens and the Despot 001 to make a Kathuga. Yep. We're going to synchro summon with another token and the Despot 001 to make us another Kathuga. We're going to overlay both our Kathugas, summon out our Dugars of which the granted effects of our Cthulhu will give my Dugars the ability on the Xyz summon to draw two cards. Cool, I drew golden land cards. That's even more fantastic. Then we're going to activate the effect of our Dugars, detaching both materials to apply the draw two effect. We're going to draw two more cards, and then we're going to discard two cards from our hand. Let's say in this case we're going to send these two. Why not? This is a situation, again, where if I were to draw clouds like our Eldritch and golden land cards, it'd be a fantastic part to discard them, because yep. then you get their graveyard effects. But, regardless, from there we're going to activate the effect of our Rorodon, tributing both the remaining token and the Dugaris. Summon a Colt Wing. Wherever the Colt Wing is, from our deck. Yep. Regardless, from there, Colt Wing's effect will then activate, especially summon two more tokens from our deck. Or from nowhere. Uh, yeah, just This tokens. will once again trigger the effect of our Colt Wing, uh, our Despot 01, summon south back to the field. From there, we're going to synchro summon with one of the tokens and the Despot 01, and we're going to make Cupid Pitch. Now, Cupid Pitch, upon Synchro Summon, will allow me to then increase or decrease his level depending on the tuner I use, which yep. is level 1. I'm going to reduce his level by 1 to make it a level 3. Now, 
Colt Wing here increased its level by the level of the tokens on the field. So it's a level seven. I'm going to synchro summon with it to make our Baroness the Flirt. Yep. Then finally from there, I'm going to synchro summon with the level three token and the Death Squad 001. And that's going to make my Herald. Yep. And then I'm going to do out of place from there. Yeah, and then you can do whatever you draw into. You could do, if you had more extenders, more cards, you can just keep going. Yeah, essentially I've drawn four cards here and then still comboed off. Oh yeah, you also started only with one card, like, well, this is a one card combo. This is a one card combo that so essentially went me plus Eight cards two. in hand. And a card, essentially, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you'd have eight cards in hand with this board. Correct. Damn. Pretty fantastic. That's pretty cool. Uh, now, in the odd situation where obviously you, let's say, for example, you may have Prod of Prosperity, which means you're definitely not going to be drawing cards. Yep. This play works a different, a little differently. Regardless, like before, once again, we're going to summon out of the Cult Wing. Cult Wing's going to summon back three tokens. Yeah, so you do the same thing up until you where you summon Cult Wing. And that makes two tokens. But from there, we're actually going to directly go synchro summoning these two. Oh, wait, not Cold Wing, Aurodon. Or Aurodon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're going to synchro summon with those two to summon out for Christian Quandax. Yep. Why are we going to do so? Because then we use Christian Quandax, synchro summoning with the other two level three tokens, three, three, four, to immediately go into our Baroness to Flirt. Yep. Regardless from there, we're then going to activate the effect of our Cold Wing, tributing the remaining 001 and. The Aurodon to now summon out the Colt Wing. Once again, summoning out two tokens. But because our zones are free, we can only summon out one of our 001s. Yep. From there, we're then going to single summon with that 001 and this Colt Wing. And this will allow us to make our Cupid Pitch. Cupid Pitch will then modulate its level to level 5 this time, though. Okay. Because then we can single their level 3 token to then make Borderlord Savage Dragon, of which we'll then equip... The Aurodon for three negates. And this is once again, while, and while this combo does not draw you cards, this still ends up on two negates off of just one summon, technically with a beater as well. Yeah, so one card combo pretty much. Yep. Yeah. Okay, one card combo dot deck and then you have a bunch of traps. Yep. I think this is really cool. This deck technically, because of things like your golden, uh, your Conquistor, you can play around things like Mystic Mind rather easily. Yep. And because realistically you're still playing an Elledge package, you don't absolutely lose to something like a Dark Moon more. Hey guys, so it's like one, 18 in the morning right now it's 1 18 in the morning i'm editing this video don't know what happened to the end of the video it kind of got cut off not sure why but if you guys did enjoy make sure to like and subscribe also go check out tony's channel um yeah that's really all i gotta say i just wanted to finish this off with this video and not on a, like on a really abrupt note but yeah um with that spanko and i guess tony signing out peace